Tonight, we now know what killed the Arborview High School grad and a Northern Arizona University football player. An autopsy found Malik knows she died of an opioid overdose. The coroner finding fentanyl in his system. The report also says no, she recently used cocaine and had been drinking alcohol. His body was found in Flagstaff, Arizona in July. Police are now trying to figure out how he got the drugs. No, she graduated from Arborview in 2015 and headed to Northern Arizona University and played football there. He was 22 years old. Well, a local child care facility is closing now for good. Tip Top Child Development Center was closed in June by the health department. Inspectors found more than 60 violations. Some of the violations included a child care provider changing multiple diapers without washing her hands and dirty toys found around the business. Now, they did clean things up, but the owner told us today they had to close permanently because they weren't able to financially recover after that first closure. They lost some 60% of the children they watched. I'm really sorry to all the parents that this displaced. I feel horrible because this was something that I had set out to provide for the families of Las Vegas. Well, multiple employees also say their biggest concern right now is making sure they get their final paychecks. McCarran is adding new advanced machines hoping to speed up busy security lines. The new machines help validate your information through a database by simply providing your ID or passport. No boarding pass needed. The new body scanner won't require you to raise your arms when you step into the machine. McCarran officials say the new machines are only being tested and evaluated about four hours a day. The two events planned right near the Area 51 site, they are now getting the go ahead. Lincoln County Commissioners accepted a promoter's plan to hold a music festival in Heiko. They're also approving a request from the owner of an inn to let about 10,000 people camp on her property in Rachel. Last month, the board drafted an emergency declaration to make sure the area has enough resources ahead of the events on September 20th through the 22nd. Well, new tonight, if you need your phone repaired, you can go to Best Buy or the Apple Store, or you can use a cell phone kiosk in the mall, which are often quicker and even cheaper. But tonight, we have a caution about some of them so you don't waste your money. Danielle Scruggs cracked the screen on her iPhone a few weeks back and decided it was time to get it replaced. We were walking through the mall and saw this kiosk, and we're like, why not? So she handed off the phone at this kiosk. A half hour later, she had a new screen, but a new problem, too. It kept turning on and off, got to the car, it wouldn't charge. She says it was fine an hour earlier. Assuming the screen replacement because it, the phone worked perfectly fine before. So the tech told her to FedEx the phone to the chain's lab for repair. But when it came back... Still not working. It won't give us, like, the manager's number or anything, or the owner's number or the name. It turns out almost all third-party phone repair facilities make you sign a waiver when you drop your phone off. It might be on paper, it might be on an iPad, but either way it releases them of all responsibility for damages. The franchise manager says they will refund her $100 screen fee. Buddy explained they will not pay for a new iPhone because screens with broken phones often have pre-existing damage and their waiver specifically says not liable for damages. Danielle says next time she will go to Apple with new iPhone she just purchased. Yeah, you know, you can't mess around with that. No. Yeah, yeah. you gotta get scammed sometimes, sometimes. Uh, all right, yeah. Danny, talking about the hurricane, but now we're talking about our local weather yeah. here. I have a voice again. <laughs> <laughs> Voila, yeah, today it was a hot one across Las Vegas Valley. We landed at 106 degrees. The record for today was 108, so we were a lot closer to the record than we were the average temperature. The good news is by the end of my seven day, those temperatures getting a whole lot closer to average, even slightly below average temperatures to look forward to early next week. But we have a couple more days with this monsoon moisture in place, and we have at least another day with highs near 106. Right now, satellite and radar looking really clear and quiet. We did see a few stubborn thunderstorms over our mountain areas this evening. They have quieted down. We're not looking at any rain at this point. So the only thing that I'm watching right now is that excessive heat warning that's still in place for portions of the Colorado River Valley, Lake Mead, Hoover Dam, Laughlin, all a part of this excessive heat warning with high temperatures tomorrow expected 110 to 115. So not only are we talking about the potential for monsoon moisture, bringing that thunderstorm chance. We're also talking about extreme heat, so a lot to watch out for.
for in the next day or so. Right now, temperature is setting at 94 for Las Vegas, 99 in Laughlin, 85 in Indian Springs. We're at 88 in St. George, a warm evening for sure. Uh, temperatures across the valley spread into the upper 